Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have 27x cubed minus x minus 1 to the third power equals 2x plus 1 to the third power. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the met methods may be incomplete. All right, let's start with the first one. So the first method is basically just expanding everything, right? So let's go ahead and expand x minus 1 quantity cubed. That's going to give us x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then let's simplify this a little bit. If you subtract, you're going to get 26x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. And on the right-hand side, we're just going to cube this. And you know, for a plus b quantity cubed, I usually use a different formula, which looks like this a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab a plus b it's kind of easy to remember but you could also use the you know the original version doesn't matter no big deal uh, so according to that we're going to get 8x cubed plus 1 and then plus 3ab is just multiply those two terms together and multiply by 3 and then that's going to be multiplied by 2x plus 1 it just i don't know it's just a little easier to remember for me and then from here let's see what we get this is going to be 12x squared plus 6x and now let's go ahead and subtract 8x here 8x cubed that's going to give us 18x cubed and then we, we have 3x squared minus 12x squared it's going to be minus 9x squared minus 3x plus 6x that's going to be minus 9x and best of all one is going to cancel out isn't that awesome no constants so we can just solve this easily now we can factor out a 9x and that gives us 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So here's the obvious solution, x equals 0, right? Now when you go back to the original problem, do you think x equals 0 is going to work? You can easily check that out. So if you go ahead and replace x with 0, you're going to get from here 0 minus 1, which is negative 1 cubed. From here, you're going to get 0, 0 minus negative 1, which is a positive 1. And if you plug in 0, you're going to get positive 1. So, yes, x equals 0 works, actually. There's no reason why you, it wouldn't. So that's a good solution. And the other solutions should be coming from the quadratic. Let's go ahead and solve them using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac plus 4 times 2, which is 8. By the way, when a and c have different signs, there are always real solutions. Something to keep in mind. And that is divided by 4, right? b squared minus 4ac. Great. So 9 is a perfect square. This tells us that there is going to be rational solutions. So one of them is going to be 1 plus 3 over 4, which is 1. And the other one is going to be 1 minus 3 over 4, which is negative 1 half. So we got three solutions, 1, negative 1 half, and 0. Since our equation is cubic, this should be all the solutions. Make sense? Great. So even though I said I was going to present two methods, looks like we have a third method. I don't know if we're going to talk about it, but maybe if we have time left. Okay. Let's take a look at the second method now. So for the second method, we're going to do something very different. Well kind of and then I'll talk about the third method if, again towards the end if I don't forget so I want to go ahead and add x minus 1 cubed to both sides there's a good reason what we, I'll tell you in a little bit but I want to put these two positive terms together and then I want to write the 27 x cubed as 3 x to the third power since 27 is a perfect cube uh, we can do that, right? Okay. Now, here's the cool part. If you pay attention to what's inside the parentheses, 2x plus 1 and x minus 1, what do you notice? Okay? If you said there's sum is equal to 3x, you got it. So 2x plus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 3x, correct? Okay. Now, what does that mean? It means that we can use substitution. So if this is A and this is B, this will be A plus B. 
Awesome. Let's go ahead and write that equation in terms of a and b, and then we'll see what we can do with that, because that's going to give us some identities. a plus b to the third power equals a to the third plus b to the third. And I think we've done some problems like this before. So we have a plus b quantity cubed. Obviously, when you expand it with the formula that I talked about, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. You could also use the, what is it called, uh, binomial theorem, same thing. Now, we can go ahead and cancel these out. And we're going to end up with 0. Nice. And this is uh, factored already. So from here, by setting this equal to 0, we get two things. Either a, b is equal to 0 or a plus b is equal to 0. So let's see what a and b are. So a is linear, b is linear. Their product is going to be the product of two linear factors. So 2x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0 from here, right? That's how we designated the a and b values. Great, because this is already factored. Well, if you go back to the quadratic formula we just solved with the first method, you'll realize it's the same one, right? So from here, if 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 1 half, or x is equal to 1. Easy, right? So one of the things that about x being 1 is, if you remember, we've talked about this a lot, if you check the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial equation, and if it's 0, then 1 is always a solution. Cool. And what about a plus b, right? This is a and this is b, so we're just going to add them. 2x plus 1 plus x minus 1 equals 0. That is 3x equals 0, and that is x equals 0. And guess what? This is going to give us the exact same solutions as before. And of course, that shouldn't be a surprise, right? Because we solved the same problem. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look. Looks like we're going to be able to squeeze it in. Uh, the third method real quick, okay? So, notice that with the second method, I kind of wanted to put those two together. Could I get away without? Yes, in that case, you would look at the difference. And we're kind of looking at it right now with the third method. That's why I wanted to kind of talk about it. So let's leave the x minus 1 cubed on the left-hand side and just factor this expression because this is the difference of two cubes, right? This is 3x cubed and this is x minus 1 cubed. Let's see if that's going to help. When you factor uh, a cubed minus b cubed, you're going to get a minus b, one of the factors, right? And then the other factor is going to be a squared, which is 9x squared, plus ab, which is this, plus b squared, which is x minus 1 squared. Awesome. And this is supposed to equal what? 2x plus 1 cubed. And then from here, what do we get? 2x plus 1. That's awesome. And then this one gives us 9x squared plus x squared. That's going to be 10x squared, right? Oh, I think we're going to get another one. 3x squared, 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. So we, we should get 13x squared. Great. And then we get minus 3x and then minus 2x. That's going to give us minus 5x. And then what do we get? Any constants? Plus 1, right? And this is equal to 2x plus 1 cubed. So one of the things you can do is don't cancel out the 2x plus 1, but put everything on the same side, factor out 2x plus 1, and you're going to get 2x plus 1 squared on the right-hand side, which comes from the left-hand side, minus this. And when you expand it, you're going to get a quadratic, which is easy to solve, but this is going to give you a negative 1 half, which we already had before. So pretty much the same thing. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.